Hi, I'm the animator on this scene and this is a, a video that shows in real time how I cleaned up a single frame. Now you can see the line quality uh, is one very even thick line which was designed this way to replicate the original show which is how they did it. They had no varying line quality thickness. But a tiny slight amount I notice actually but only because of the imperfections of the human hand. So to replicate this I made a very uh, even line quality and the idea behind it as well is that it's it's one that can be used or replicated in various different programs. Say someone if we had uh, hired someone from I don't know a freelance online and that animator had uh, Adobe Animate or even Toon Boom or something, they could replicate the line quality. I, we made it very universal. Uh, I was thinking about experimenting with, say, um, a line quality that replicated pencil t a texture when you, you know, with the imperfections like the pencil reproduces in the quality of the line but that would be hard to replicate in many different uh, programs so this was more universal ah yes and <laughs> you can see I've added uh, some squat and stretch and some also um, multiples see his nose there various little noses to give the impression of uh, flexibility in the movement. Now something interesting that Don Bluth used to do with his cleanup team in the morning as an exercise is have them spend, I don't know, five minutes or so, this is what I heard, uh, from one, an older, older animator. Uh, they did exercises, warm up exercises, where they would draw circles, clean up team, just um, using the, the movement from their shoulders, so they big, draw big circles on their piece of paper in front of them, nice, steady, clean circles, and the movement was coming from their shoulders as opposed to their, their wrist. So they have a lot more control in in producing the curve. There's a lot of curves in animated cartoons. As you can see, Sonic's head is just a big circle. Now, uh, a great thing about TV paint is actually you can rotate the canvas. And for cleanup, that's very, very handy. Yeah, I'm... Uh, <laughs> Using Control Z a lot actually, this video. I just picked a random frame to do this for, but it should give you a good idea and a nice little peek into the process of how we do it. I actually decided to go against the, the rough animation here and uh, decide to change the drawing of the ear. I didn't like the, the movement from the, the rough. See, um, you can see me there actually measuring uh, where the, the movement or the curve is going, doing it just by eye. I gave up doing it freehand, so <laughs> I used the line tool, which is uh, probably a lot more smarter than, than doing freehand all the time. Now the rough is a lot rougher than I'd like to give to a cleanup artist. Uh, generally I'd give a much more, a tighter drawing for the tie down. But since this was just myself doing the whole scene, 
and doing the clean up. I felt a lot more confident working from a rough, a very rough, rough. Now, Sonic Spikes, even though they're pointy, they have a little bit of a curve again, so they, you know, they don't poke anybody's eyes out. I'm not sure if that's a Saturday morning TV show decision for kids or, or just an, an aesthetic approach. But they've got these tiny little curves at the end, so they're not entirely dangerous weapons or blades in his head. Makes you wonder how he can drill through those swap parts. Now, I had a lot of fun on this scene. I noticed uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, the, at least the, uh, the American interpretation of Sonic the Hedgehog, is very much inspired by um, Mickey Mouse from Disney cartoons. Got the same snout, same head, same sort of eyes. Uh, the the gloves as they're very similar. I actually looked at um, some Mickey Mouse reference for how they drew the gloves to help out with this Sonic. Yeah, that, that blue thing there is supposed to be a watch. Don't worry, I know what it is. <laughs> so I'll get that drawn nicely. Well, nicely, nicely I can. I made some mistakes, but. You can't notice. Shh, don't tell the team. Anyway, the imperfections add to the, the whole uh, old drawn on cell aesthetic. We tried to get as close as we could to the original look of the cartoon, but with a more consistent field and in terms of how we respected the model sheets as the original series was done on a budget and naturally uh, the, the level of artistry um, was going to well, well what well, I don't want to say it was bad because it wasn't bad it was nice bits of animation just um, quite inconsistent in a lot of frames. Still a ton of work. As you can see, this is just one frame. So imagine doing this on a piece of cell, on a piece of plastic with a, an ink pen. I have a lot of respect for those animators. But now we've got modern technology, we can be a little bit more accurate and consistent with our models. So that's what we are. That's one of the aims of the the series is to have very, very um, respectful, authentic. Uh, oh, what's the word? Well, the look to it. So it looks just like the original cartoon, but improving objectively improvable aspect that makes sense so keep my characters more on model and for that we had to find out what the model was because the original uh, model sheets that we found online um, didn't well especially for Sonic didn't actually look like Sonic the Hedgehog from the series it was a bit weird so we kind of had to come up with our own and uh, team member Tim did a good job creating model sheets and going over how all the characters should look in movement and such. And I've made a couple of uh, model sheets, aside from some background characters, for Sonic looking at how they approached multiples, blurs, and all those fun things, along with... Okay, for this scene, I, I referenced um, a few pieces of animation on Sonic himself was a, one, a couple were running and how many frames of movement his feet 
or how many drawings in the, uh, were needed to replicate the spinning legs, the how many frames Sonic needed to anticipate an action, and how many he needed to settle, you know, technical stuff like that. that only sad, pathetic animators who spend all day drawing would be interesting, interested in, and those who are <laughs> curious about the method. But normal people probably be dead bored, so I don't know why I'm telling you all. Anyway, if you're interested, that's the process. Well, that's how far I went in depth with it. And for the scene, we had a um, storyboard to follow. So I had a put a storyboard down uh, the, from the animatic, imported the, the movie into the scene, drew out the main key poses, the poses that tell the story. Then I broke them down with some extremes, so where Sonic um, went into a pose, an extreme pose before changing direction and moving into another. I then some breakdowns and then finally in between it. Yeah, since that leg's nice and straight, I decided to just use the straight line tool. For the shadows, we decided to, uh, well, I worked in some, <clears throat> excuse me, some films before from uh, feature films. And one of the productions we did uh, black shadows. It was a film that was, uh, heavily uh, used shadows. They were quite integral to the the story aspect as well. And what would they would do? The animator, us animators, or FX animators, we were called, even though we're just doing shadows, would draw the shadows out and colour with a line and colour them all in just in black at 100% opacity, export them and then have other compositors who are great people that take all the bits of the layers of animation so the character with the colours, the props, the effects animation, the backgrounds, you know, the foreground elements, background elements and put them all together in one scene and adjust bits of lighting, uh, uh, alter the effects animation to give it a little bit more oomph. So say fire, they can add a glow, a nice little glow to it. So on this film, we have the effect animation of the shadows, which were just pitch black, solid colors. And they would adjust the color of them to fit the, the color keys for each scene depending if it's like a at dusk nice warm sunset that would make a warm reddish tint on the shadows which is what we plan to do for this because uh, the color keys were an important part in this in figuring out the colors for each scene. Oh, a fun thing I did with the the legs, because he's kicking his legs about a lot. Can you see all these multiple feet? After drawing in the cleanup lines like this, on a separate layer, well, I coloured all the characters in the block with um, flat colours. And then on another separate layer, I added some blurs, which is similar to the Saturday morning cartoon, quite old cartoons as well. You can often see it in Tom and Jerry or Looney Tunes, or especially when they zip out of a place, they use a lot of blur drawings. Yes, and that's the, that's the clean up and a few frames before and after as he's skidding to a halt. 
and that's it thanks for watching